Bit of Friday here at Second Swing. Uh, got a chance to test the new ST190 Mizuno Ferrywood. Uh, I'm really excited about that. I'm Thomas Campbell, here with fellow fitter, James Tracy. Good morning, Thomas. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. Um, heard some, you know, good stuff about, about this uh, Ferrywood so far this year. Um, yeah, it's nice to have an adjustable Mizuno Ferrywood back in play. Yeah. A lot of ball speed we've been seeing with this thing. I know the blogs are kind of all about this Ferrywood right now, so it'd be interesting to kind of get your take on it. Yeah. Yep, adjustability you mentioned. So we'll get a chance to play around with adjustability, maybe play around with the loft a little bit. I've been doing um, a lot of fittings lately with fairway woods. You know, it's that time of year, kind of more deeper into the season. Maybe it's a driver fitting that we did earlier in the year. They want a matching fairway wood. So curious to see how, you know, as we change loft, and how that influences things outside of just the trajectory as we do that to the same club. Yeah. So it should be interesting. Sounds good. Well, why don't we get after it, hit a few of this and see what happens. Great, let's do it. All right, Thomas, let's see what you got this morning. All right, it's going to be a, a real test hitting and jumping in in the three wood off the ground first thing in the morning, but well, if, we'll see what I got. If there's anyone that can do it, I'm <laughs> confident that it's you. What, uh, yeah. How do we have that thing set up right now? So right now, we've got it 15 degrees, just standard setting. Okay. Uh, and then we've got the Atmos Torspec 7S okay. black um, shaft in here. Excellent. So press now kind of pretty standard let's setting. Let's five and let's see, see what this thing's got. All right. I love this look. I love, you know, kind of the way I got away from that little blue look in the last model with the Mizuno. It's a little less polarizing for sure. Correct. Traditional black look looks nice. Yep, that was the first swing of the day. Oh, oh. yeah, terrible. Wow, look at that ball flight. <laughs> I mean, I would take that direction every day. Yeah. That was just a little bit too much ground on that yeah, one. Yeah, I don't know if we'd find that one, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Might be the straightest one I'll hit all day, actually. I doubt it. <laughs> uh, a little bit of ground on that one, too. You mentioned how the darker, just kind of uh, glossy black was a little more pleasing to your eye. How about that little white kind of pinstripe on the back? I can see it from where I am. How does that come into play at a dress? You talking about this, like a little round the, yeah, the back yeah. right there? Yeah. No, I didn't visually notice it kind of right away. I was more focused on kind of alignment up here. Sure. Um, yeah, it looks looks perfectly fine. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah, it looks looks just nice and symmetrical. I guess symmetrical. How about in terms of like on the hitting a club off the ground? Some fairy woods kind of have that deeper profile, which might be more of a T. Monster versus a yep. shallower profile, which might give players more confidence to hit it up in the air off the ground. I would say How this gives us gives me a little bit more confidence to hit it off the ground. Okay. It's not like it's a tiny, more compact club head. It's you know, definitely looks like it's got a little bit of loft on there. It's got some lift to it. A little bit of lift on it. It's not okay. like it's a a tiny club head or anything like that. So, right. looks like I can hit it off the ground, present some confidence. Three in a row have hit off the ground a little bit. He said, Lua. Typically, in the fairwoods that you game, what type of loft do you use, Thomas? So, my fairwood right now is right at about 14 and a half degrees. 14.5? Yep, yep. So pretty close to, you know, for me, fairwood, I, th I find that probably the, fair, the hardest club to hit in, in the bag. I'm not sure a lot of golfers do as well. Oh, definitely. You know, when there's not much loft on that club, you know, it doesn't present that much confidence. So. Right. Um, I'm just, you know, trying to hit something around about t kind of 270, yeah. kind of gap between my, my bag, right? I'm not trying to hit it too crazy long, mm -hmm. you know, you know, just trying to gap perfectly in my bag. So. Great. Here we go. That was a little more solid. There's a little ball speed. A little more draw that I like to hit. Or Pat and Campbell. <laughs> Campbell draw. Yep. That's what we like to see. 1.5 smash. I like the looks of that. I would take Back. That's about as fast as a fairwood will go off of that club head speed. Good strike. Let's hit one more. Those last two were 
Very nice, Tom. They're pretty nice right there. Well, I think what we saw there is what most folks will see with a three wood is even though your miss hits were directionally very good, you, know, you yep. lost some distance when the club didn't make just real crystallized contact with the turf. Correct. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Quite a little heavy, sure. You know, when you build your fairway woods to 14.5 in terms of the loft, I mean, it sounds like you're doing that mainly just to create the right distance gap between Correct. your driver. But it's not necessarily the loft that is the, necessarily the most playable off the ground. So I think it would be interesting as I know some players and even other fitters might feel like more loft makes the club easier to hit off the ground. So yep. I wouldn't mind seeing what happens. And what do we see in terms of the launch conditions? How much yardage are you giving up by adding the loft versus the consistency of your contact? Yep. You know, and it also when you adjust the loft, what else is that doing from a visual standpoint to that head? You know, is it looking closed? Is it set up more upright? You know, what are you noticing as you make that change? And then, you know, kind of the flip side, you know, if we you kind of Frankenstein that thing down to like a two wood, yep. you know, is that actually making the ball go further or is it is it creating too little spin um, and making it harder to play off the ground? Or so sacrificing carry distance or some long balls. Correct. Long balls. Yeah. So yep. let's make some adjustments yep. to that thing and let's see what happens. You think it may be going kind of one extreme to the other here? I, I do. I mean, yep. from a testing standpoint, yep. obviously, you know, when I'm in a fitting, I like to make more extreme changes yep. to things like that because I know if if it's too low in one setting and then I go higher and it's now too high, oh, cool. I don't have to test back. the middle yeah. one. I know that you're a goalie locks and you just should be right in between those two settings. Yep. Um, also, sometimes when you make a, a, cha a half degree of loft or a quarter degree lie angle or what have you, I mean, you're, only gonna, you're not going to see a you're ton of see difference. It, yeah. it might just be the golfer's hit location or just subtle changes in their swing that causes the changes in the numbers. So, yep. so what we have here on the highest setting is adding two degrees. Okay. So we're up to 17, 17 degrees. degrees. All right. So add a new tag there for our track man report. So yep. 17 degrees. So we'll see what we should anticipate a little more spin, sometimes a little less ball speed. You're putting a little more of a glancing blow at mm -hmm. impact if the dynamic loft is a little bit higher. Yep. Um, but we'll just see what that does in terms of the ball flight and your confidence with it. Yeah, I must say, you know, putting this down when you've obviously put that up a couple of degrees, I set this down and it looks very close to me. So okay. I feel like it's okay. gonna kind of go straight left. You know, I probably can probably, you know, manipulate that a little bit, set up, but okay. definitely but maybe looks a like a golfer that, that wants to see a club that is gonna produce a draw ball flight. Yep. Visually, that club looks like it's easier to draw. Correct. So that can yeah. be a positive. And probably present a little more players. confidence. And that's yeah. what we kind of, like I said, the fairy wood's probably one of the hardest club's really to hit off the ground, so it might right. present a little more confidence with that player. Super. Yep. I hit it solid. It was a little, yeah, maybe a little speed spinny. Was good. Yeah. yeah, spin did come up a little bit. No. Uh, theoretically, we're, we're comparing a three wood and almost a four wood, you know, yeah. in terms of loft structure right. so we should anticipate a little higher flight definitely definitely saw some more spin there mm -hmm. nice and straight though that was better yeah that was really good there oh. terrific smash great uh shape to that shot. Yeah, that was probably the most solid one that I feel like I had hit today so far. Almost. Almost. A compliment from Thomas. <laughs> really close to acceptable. <laughs> really close. Too much of a perfectionist sometimes. All the time. That one feel like you're going to leak it a little to the right? A little bit, yeah. I feel like I stayed one. back on that a little bit, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Felt like it was maybe just a little bit kind of low on the face. Yeah, you caught that one a little on the rise, yeah. and the face was a little open. So that ball flight kind of suggests you kind of hit that little hang-on flare. Yep. Just a touch. Still good ball speed, though. That was good there. Another really good one. Yep. I might be building you a four-way there, Thomas. <laughs> if I could hit those two shots up there, I would be very, very happy with that little drawer. I know, those are perfect. Yep. 
That was pretty nice too. Got three there that yeah, way. Yeah, three really excellent ones. And you can see, I mean, on your on your best moments, you had three of those moments with the higher loft, two with the yep. 15 degrees of loft, and they all total distance wise were very similar in comparison. If we flip I'm this to I carry, was to say I in terms of carry distance, distance yeah. you actually were carrying it at 17 a little bit further, yep. which makes sense, right? I mean, the, the, the higher spin, the higher launch angle. Two degrees more you know, loft, you would expect it to maybe correct. stay in the air a little longer. Yeah, so you're getting yep. a little bit better flight in terms of overall carry distance. Yep. You know, your smash factor actually was a little bit better on that sample size. Now, some of that mm -hmm. could be just, you know, better, better swings, better strikes. But, yep. you know, I think that that is one theory that, you know, a little more loft off the ground is helpful. You know, look at hybrids, look at your nine iron compared to your five iron. I know there's length differences there, but loft can make your, you know, confidence go up and certainly helps get the ball up in the air, which we're seeing, you know, launch and spin both went up, you know, two degrees in launch, spin jumped up about, uh, let's do some quick math there, you know, a little over 600 RPMs. Yep. And a nice seven yard increase in terms of the carry. The run out distance on average was longer with 15. So if you're a player now. that's playing on a course where you can run it out and you like a more penetrating flight, you might hedge towards 15. If you're a player that wants to see a club that draws a little more, at least visually looks like it's going to draw, and maybe you don't have the confidence to get your three wood up in the air, yeah. um, going to 17, really no drop off. If anything, you're carrying a little bit further, which is an advantage, right? Correct. Yeah. So let's do the opposite. Let's right. let's just swing it all the way to see the what other happens side. Here. Yep. I really Correct. like that. That was uh, that was nice. I mean, I run into players that you know have a lot of speed that don't want to see the ball go left that struggle with spin yep and a fairway wood that you can do just what we're about to do is kind of almost go from a four wood to almost like a two wood you know that might fit well for some players so let's see what yep. happens when we when we do something like that how does the ball speed and the consistency change do you see a more open face or a more fade look to the club and then are we actually gaining distance or are we just sacrificing carry? You know, yep. should spin the lowest. So we might see a couple run out there a little longer. And then that would be maybe a club you could maybe hit off the tee a little bit there too. Oh, it's true too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think if you're a player that has high spin, maybe doesn't want to see the left side of the course and maybe a three wood is a club where you're not using it off the ground too much into par fives. It's more of a, you know, a backup to your driver. Yep. Now this could be a setting that is appealing for some players. Correct. Or that player that just doesn't hit their driver very well and hits a three wood better. And exactly. Anyways, you could do yeah. that option. Yeah. No. Yep. Well, I will tell you right away, does definitely does not look as closed. It just kind of looks more like that we had it when you had 15 degrees before. Okay. Okay. So you're really just yeah. seeing less face as anything. Yeah. This isn't, so before, you know, when you had different. that toe, definitely felt like that was kind of rotated over a little okay. bit. So. Okay. I feel like I didn't quite catch that one. Yep. It was not a bad miss. Yeah, it was yep. a little low on the face, right? Yep. That's it's why exactly the spin, where it the felt spin like. was a little high on it. Yep. Right? Still pretty centered east and west, though. That's why yep. I didn't quite have as much hustle as the others. I feel like my foot slipped just a little bit on that one. Yeah, we'll blame the shoe, of course. <laughs> That felt a little more solid. Interesting. Nice. Well, that was hit pretty hard. Yeah. Surprisingly, keeping some pretty decent spin on this one. We'll see yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, I would have expected maybe that spin rate to kind of drop right away, but yeah, and we'll see if you're like if you're presenting the club a little differently. Knowing I feel like that I'm trying to loft. maybe help it up. Yeah, well, I think I think you're yeah. unfortunately you're not a perfect robot, you know, because you you are going <laughs> to adapt yourself to the club a little bit. Definitely right? react to not how all golfers looks. are, are going to do that or know how to do that. But yeah, yeah, you are swinging it to keep it at the same height. I mean, I could definitely probably see that four degree difference, but if you had maybe told me complete opposite and not let me look, it would be interesting to see what would have happened there. Very true. Actually, we should do a, con a content video where we hand you things completely blind and see what yeah. happens. That's a good thought.
But I would say that to that point, there are fittings where I will intentionally do that. You know, if it's a golfer where I think, you know, they'll benefit and I'll get better feedback from them if they don't know everything mm -hmm. about what they're about to test. And instead I say, <laughs> let's, I'll tell you exactly what that is after you hit it. Because if yep. I tell them that, oh, this shaft's heavier and stiffer, and then I say, well, how'd that feel? Well, they're most likely going to tell me that it was heavier and stiffer. <laughs> but it's only because I planted the seed, you know, yeah. if I tell them this club is going to draw a little more, that might influence how they swing it. You Correct. Know? So I think there is a benefit to being a little more. Try and be a little as least biased as you can towards yeah. the club. Yeah. Not being sneaky, but just only giving the necessary information to the player and letting the club and them just kind of have that relationship yeah. before you study it. So uh, That last more. one felt real good. Yeah. That last one felt Perfect. real solid right yep. there. Spin was under 3,000. Yeah. Really good ball speed. Yeah. And it flew straight. Yep. So. Nice. Yeah, directionally good pattern. You yep. know, for you because the spin on average, you know, is pretty good. And maybe that setup just fits your your swing a little bit better, you know, being a little bit more of a shallow player into the ball. Yep. You know, swing a little more from the inside. You know, more upright lie angle both visually and dynamically probably doesn't work as good for you on a fairway wood. And yep. so you're actually probably benefiting from the lower loft, not so much because there's less loft, but just because, you know, the leading edge of that club's probably just working through the ground a little bit better. Correct. You look at your miss hits. You, know, you really didn't have any, to be honest. I mean, your work, your yardage deviation was much better at that loft. Yep. You know, the ball speed and smash factor were the best at that loft. Mm -hmm. You know, so for you and you know your quality of strike, you know, it was terrific. You know, it was kind of interesting how the spin kind of jumped around a little bit. Correct. Um, yeah. I think know. the first one, my first couple of shot I, shots, I hit the ground a little bit with that for a 15 degree. Yeah. That's why the spin rate was just kind of a little on the lower side there Definitely. too. Definitely. Well, you had a couple yep. drop kickers drop and you kicks, had one yeah. kind of random 2000 RPM or, yep. you know, that it was kind of a, a deviant from the rest of the average. Yep. Um, but, you know, I think the last two sample sizes, the 17 and the 13 were a little more similar to how you're kind of trying to hit that fairway wood. Both of those at the same club head speed you know, as we went from 17 to 13, yeah. you know, big swing in terms of the loft. Yeah. We did see more ball speed. You know, the spin wasn't quite as low as I was expecting it to be, yeah. but that well, also I like the might consistency. Have, yeah. I mean, look at that small number mm -hmm. right there yeah, under that 13 exactly. degree. Consistency right across the board was just so much better. Yeah, for yeah. you, I think what that tells us is that, you know, the, your choices on playing fairy woods below 15 degrees of loft, not only to create the distance gap that you said, you know, there's your 276, which you said is kind of in between your your driver and your next club yep. down. Um, and the fact that you weren't hitting as much of a draw. I mean, you had a lot of balls that just were pretty true and straight. Correct. And we know that yep. that ball flight is going to have a little bit more overall spin versus one that's, you know, turning 10, 15 yards right to left. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, overall, yeah, that setting for you was probably the best one. Um, but for, for a lot of golfers, what we, we might find just the opposite, especially if you're a player that usually doesn't hit your fairwood very high and you tend to leak the ball more to the right. You know, that 17 degree adjustment on that Mizuno fairway wood might yep. give you a lot more confidence to, to hit the ball where you want to. And, you know, from a carry distance standpoint and a total distance standpoint, we weren't seeing much more than a five to 10 yard difference. It's just, you know, kind of finding that right setting for you. So James, we got the chance to test the ST190 Mizuno fairway wood, three different loft settings that we had. Yep. We started out standard 15 degrees, hit it pretty, pretty solid. Maybe I was kind of warming up just a little bit there first up. Um, pretty good numbers overall though, pretty consistent. Then we jumped up to 17 degrees, put it up a little bit higher. What were, you, what were your first takes on when I put it a little higher? Well, you'd said right away that you, you noticed that the club set a little bit more closed, which makes sense. A lot of yep. clubs, when you add loft, it does change the lie angle. It just gives the face, you see more face, you see a little more left bias. Yep. Some golfers are really gonna benefit with that. Um, your ball speed picked up right away when we did that. Carry distance didn't suffer at all. In fact, it went up, it yep. went up a little yep. bit. Yep. So you yep. know, I think that's where taking a three wood into a four wood for a lot of players off the ground is a huge win. Off the ground, that's probably a better club for the majority of golfers. Yep. You know, when we flipped it to 13 degrees, makes it more of a driving club, you know, better on, you know, a longer shot, you know, the ball speed and your pattern got a little bit better. And I think dynamically that loft works better with your swing style. Yep. Um, but we definitely saw that in all three settings, that club was pretty fast. It was good to look at. And then again, with the adjustability, it really makes it a club that we can fit to just about anybody. Yeah, at 13 degrees, did look a little more open. Um, Definitely hit a little straighter, didn't yep. go as far left. And also the dispersion was a little tighter. So I'd be like I said, 13 maybe just fit my profile just a little bit better. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. No, Overall, really fine. good. Yep.
Excellent. Well, yeah, come into Second Swing or jump on our website, take a look at the new Mizuno fairway wood, and uh, you guys have a great rest of the day.